since after the tribunal judgment, I have been taking my time to listen to some people on their analysis concerning the judgment. But when I listen to this man on this interview, on what he said concerning these judgments, I think this one is one of the best analysis so far I don't hear concerning these judgments. You get one, one, you get one thing where this man talk here yeah, where I like so much. He said that the justice will deliver these judgments before the judgment when the proceeding was on, that this man says that they will not pass their judgment based on technicality, but substantial evidence. But when he was passing the judgment, he used technicality. <laughs> that it's as if he was just reading a newspaper. Let me talk more. Now this man, wait to see for this video now, talk It was as if he was reading newspaper. I would like us to watch this analysis. As you are watching this video, try to share it, like it, comment your opinion, and also try to follow me, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are watching from YouTube. We move. Remember, we are moving forward to the Supreme. Let's see if justice will be served over there. We move. In the judgment delivered by the Presidential Election Petitions Court, uh, Nigeria's main opposition, the People's Democratic Party, has also rejected the verdict in its entirety, apart from its candidate. The party has, in a statement by spokesperson Debo Logmuagba, uh, said the judgment is, quote, against reason, against the facts and evidence presented in court, against the relevant electoral laws, guidelines and regulations, as well as the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999. The PDP also stated that, quote, indeed, the judgment is generous in technicalities and very short in delivering substantial justice in the matter. But while the PDP fumes over the decision of the court, the governing of Progressive Congress extending a, the olive branch to the opposition, calling on them to join hands with it to build the nation. And after Vice President Kashim Shetima boasted about retiring former Vice President uh, and PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar to rearing broilers in Fombina, the special assistant on public communications to the PDP candidate Frank Shaibu has accused Shatima of lacking the character and temperament to serve as Nigeria's vice president. Uh, Shaibu, in reaction to Shatima's speech, said Shatima as governor failed abysmally in lifting his people out of poverty and failed to curb insecurity in Borno State, leading to the kidnap of over 200 Chibok school girls in 2014, and as such, like the leadership integrity to match that of former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Trajectory of global growth is facing Africa and Nigeria. The greatest black nation on earth will make or mar that transition. We have had a very long day, but a very good day. My principal is extremely elated, and he asked me to convey his gratitude to our leaders and to the Nigerian people and to the Nigerian media who have been here all day long. The journey is just beginning. I refuse to accept the judgment because I believe that it is bereft of substantial justice. Well, to help us understand these issues in main opposition party and its reaction since the election court verdict, we are now being joined by Omar Sani, uh, who is a former spokesperson in the uh, PDP Presidential Campaign Council, and uh, he's also a former spokes is a spokesman to former Vice President Nama Disambo. Thank you so much, uh, Omar, for joining us. Uh, let's Thank you. Uh, uh, decipher um, some of these things that have been happening, and I actually read your article to where you <laughs> issued uh, so many things, including like I think about ten points as to why you think these are the takeaways from the judgment and some of the uh, things that you feel the judiciary ought to have done that they didn't do. But let's have your own general overview of the judgment. Well, uh, before I go to the general overview of the judgment, Somna, it is important for me to lay the foundation. Uh, Justice Harun Azamani, at the beginning of the tribunal, had already assured Nigerians that the, his, his uh, tribunal will not rely on technicalities. 
that they will rely on substantial justice. And so Nigerians were very hopeful and they had their trust and confidence in the uh, judiciary, believing that substantial justice will reign. But when we came uh, to the final judgment, what we saw was more of technicalities than substantial justice. Now, we, I saw so many things which are enumerated. One, I saw a judge who was reading his own judgment, who did not even understand the judgment itself. He was struggling to read the judgment. I saw in that, in that same uh, district, a judge who, was, who threw away something that was on, you know, on a credible online uh, website, which is Amazon website. He, he threw it away on the basis of the fact that the person who presented the document is an interested party. When ordinarily the document is ver verifiable and the, the, the contents can still be ver verified, then I saw a judge who went further to begin to analyze. A judge is supposed to be impartial, but a judge was analyzing to say, uh, Obi won this, Obi won that, Obi won that. Why should he complain when that is not impartiality? That is trying to justify why you are taking a position in the matter. I believe... Was it something political? He then? was more political than, than, uh, than judicial or legal. Then I saw a judge who was saying that a serious opposition... Now, this is a judge who is supposed to be impartial. He's saying a serious opposition does not need INEC. So if we don't need INEC, well, who do we need in the election? We don't even need the court. It is INEC that we need. If INEC had done their work very well, we don't need to go to the court. So for, for her to say that social media, is, we are using the social media to intimidate them. We are not using social media. Social media is a congregation of Nigerians. Nigerians from all walks of life, either within the country or in diaspora. And these Nigerians congregate to share ideas in order to move the nation forward. And in that, we have to extra examine and reassess what the justices are likely to do and what we anticipate from the justices. It is not out of the question. So if we do that and we analyze and, and then they come and do something which is contrary to general expectation, then we will now begin to ask ourselves, where did we get it wrong or where did they get it wrong? These are the two areas. So we are now look at examining where did we get it wrong or where did, did they get it wrong? And we saw that the justices, with due respect, we are not lawyers, we are, but uh, even the law says in certain degree, a man who is considered to be reasonable can still give judgment in certain areas. That is why in overseas you have jury type of judgment where reasonable people are brought to look at and examine and say, okay, this man is guilty or this man is not guilty or this is this or this is not this. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the foundations that you have laid here and some of the things that you also uh, said in that your article. I was very, very interested uh, when you talked about how someone can present two certificates from one university and, of course, uh, still be allowed to go scot-free. What did you exactly mean by that? What I mean is that if you, if you look at, there are two certificates that are currently uh, subsisting. One that the of one who certificates of, of uh, uh, Bola Tinubu, President Bola Tinubu, two certificates are currently existing. One that was issued on June 27, 1979, and the one that was issued on June 22, 1979. Two certificates. One was brought and submitted, and that was not the one that the school is certifying that it is from them. So now these two certificates are a, an issue of contention. We have gone to the school now, and we are in America to try to unearth what is actually the issues behind this. Yeah, I'm bringing this up because uh, I read that Atiku Abubakar is in the U.S. court, urging the U.S. court to quickly expedite action on that suit before it, so that he can use that to beef up his appeal to the Supreme Court. How true is that? Well, it is important that new evidence can be introduced in law. So if we are going for an appeal and we have additional new evidence to, to justify our appeal, I'm sure that the Supreme Court, you know, with a larger heart, will look at it. And so we want to look, we want to go to the Supreme Court fully confident that we have 
you know, substantial and enough evidence, sufficient and enough evidence that the Supreme Court will have no option than to say, okay, I took a book card, you are declared the winner, and you are hereby returned. Go and collect this, your certificate of return <laughs> as the okay. president of the Even after government. winning about 21 states and so on, because Tinubu is saying that, look, when it comes to uh, substantial compliance with the electoral law, I had, I won more states than any uh, of the other political parties, and then, of course, I had more spread than any of the other political parties. Uh, do you think that uh, the Supreme Court can actually go ahead to deliver judgment to someone who didn't oh. have to thought, based on what oh. INEC declared? You see, our, our contention is not about what INEC declared. If we are satisfied with what INEC declared, then there will have been no need for us to go to court. We are satisfied that INEC didn't do the, the right thing. And so in their declaration, they made grave errors. And those grave errors are the ones that led us to the tribunal. Ordinarily, we would have loved to do the good luck Jonathan's option, to say, OK, winner, uh, uh, we congratulate you. But in Nigerian situation, uh, when the umpire is already biased, is is you know is not impartial, then you are forced to try to go to court to seek redress. And so in that case, uh, whether you say you are number one or number two or number three, in our own estimation, and the reason why we have gone to court is to say you are not you do not marry that position. That is why in our argument. And when one of the justices was arguing that the only way you can prove substantial non-compliance or overvoting is at the polling unit. And we have argued, rightly too, that that is not the only way to prove overvoting. In the case of AKT State, for yeah, instance. Yeah, you mentioned AKT. Yes, I mentioned AKT. In the case of AKT, we are complaining that the total number of accredited voters who are to vote in AKT State is 300,000 on the dot. Now, uh, uh, Bola Tinubu scored 200,000 of that vote. Um, uh, uh, Atiku, Atiku or, scored 100,000 of that vote. Labour Party scored 11,000 of that vote. And Accord Party scored 10,000 of that vote. The number of votes that the candidates scored is higher than the number of people who were accredited, accredited. to vote. So that's overvoting. And that is what we are saying. So the justices have confirmed to us that they have not really and critically examine the documents and that they just give judgment on the basis of their own sentiment. Thank you. Well, I just want you to take us through our electoral jurisprudence. You are someone who has served in the presidency before and you've read through and gone through some of our uh, previous court judgments right from 1999 when we return back to the fourth uh, 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 democracy as we like to call it or the fourth republic. It looks like most times politicians don't expect justice from the Court of Appeal when it comes to presidential elections. They are always looking at the Supreme Court. But yet, we've never had any instance where the Supreme Court took any decision to favor uh, any opposition political party since 1999. Yes. Uh, the only time that was close to that was in 2007 with Yeradua and Buhari. Uh, but of course, you, you and I know that it ended four to three. Yes. You see, the, the previous justices of the Supreme Court used to take certain key positions that they do not want to upstage the apple cart because they don't want to leave a country without a president. And so, because our jurisprudence was being deepened by their uh, uh, judgments. Now, in, in two, 2007, it was a 3-3, and then Justice Weiss ca casted the, 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 the casting vote, and then uh, Eradua won. However, Due to the pressure of the opposition, Eradua was for, uh, was compelled to say, okay, his election was flawed, but that he would do something. And then he set up a, a committee headed by Justice Weiss to draw up, you know, a concrete and judicial way forward for Nigeria, electoral way forward for Nigeria, which he did. And the opposition drummed that, uh, on good luck, the implementation of the OS report, the implementation, and good luck, in good faith and in honor decided to implement fully 
the, the well, voting. not fully. Some segment, because one of the recommendations was that uh, the judiciary, that's the N NJC, should be allowed to actually uh, call for the appointment of the INEC chairman and then, of course, INEC secretary or dep INEC deputy chairman. But that one was thrown away by FEC. And, of course, uh, INEC's full independence and all of that, including that the date to set, uh, the power to set the date for election should be removed from INEC. But, of course, uh, the FEC didn't approve that part. Well, mm. if you say INEC is independent, how can you now be removing certain powers from them? If you begin to remove certain powers from them, then they are not independent. But the fact of the matter is that the judiciary and INEC are two things that we, are, we always call independent, who are not independent. Because they are supposed to draw their uh, statutory allocation f directly as a first-line charge, not to rely on government. Once government is the one uh, approving your budget, approving your 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 your, your, your request, including then, appointment of ex uh, and all uh, of that. Exactly. Then it becomes a problem for the Nigerian judiciary because they will not be able to dispense justice uh, uh, as at when due and as when required. So what we are saying generally, in a sense, is that we need a quick, quick, you know, judicial reform. The judges, as 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 it is now. And the justices that were there before have different orientation and different uh, uh, training. For instance, we didn't had, have to have any eyes on Justice Nikitobi. We don't have to have any eyes on Justice Kayode Isho. We don't have to have any eyes on Chukudifu Oputa because we know that by, by their conscience, they will deliver what is called substantial justice and that every Nigerian will believe that this is justice served. But again, I'm not condemning these justices. In the Supreme Court, we have eminent jurists like uh, Justice Emmanuel Agim. I give him uh, respect. There's Justice there's, there's Joro. You know, there are quite a number of them there that when they speak, they speak law and they speak, uh, you know, to their justice. Heart. Actually, Ju justice. they offer the same justice. Yes. So I believe that the Supreme Court is it, is a much more uh, more deepened. Uh, uh, in, in electoral jurisprudence that when people, you can imagine for instance uh, Wiki in his first tenure was, he was removed by the uh, election petitions tribunal, the court of appeal uh, affirmed it, but when he went to the Supreme Court the Supreme Court overturned it and confirmed him as the governor. Reason is being that the Supreme Court came up with a very clear theory that the the smart card reader that was recently um, uh, that was then that was put in use then in, it was put in use then was not intended to uh, to supplant the the voters register and that the voters register remains the final uh, uh, place of uh, p p uh, accreditation and so if you have less people on the smart card reader being accredited but the voter's register is saying more people have been accredited. The Supreme Court said the voter register takes precedence. And so these are some of the things that right. uh, we, are, we are talking about. All right. Uh, just before uh, we come to a conclusion of this chat, I want you to react to the uh, ongoing war between the former vice president and current vice president, uh, Shatima, saying that, look, he has retired uh, Atiku Abubakar himself and his principal, Bolatin, who have retired Atiku Abubakar, and they, are, they will be sending him to form Bina to go and start uh, engaging animal husbandry <laughs> and uh, of course Atiku and his team hit him back uh, saying that look that is not statesmanly when you're a pres uh, president or vice president your choice of words ought to be very statesmanly well, what do you make uh, of that? Uh, yeah, no, having I, worked in the office of the vice president uh, yes, yourself. I, I, have I have discovered that uh, Shetima has a very crude sense of humor you know in, in a way perhaps he was trying to you know bring his own type, type of dry jokes you know, to bear on the uh, on the polity, but in making such type of utterances, he had to be careful. He had already in initially called the former vice president an ice cream seller, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> which a lot of people <laughs> well, didn't take lightly. Which, but which people did the phone and all yes, of that. even after the phone and so forth. So he, he I, I think, he is gradually becoming uh, the the chief comedian of Asorok. 
interesting indeed. <laughs> and mm. we hope to be having more of that soundbite if uh, he chooses not to, quote, become a statesman like the PDB is telling him. Mm. But generally, uh, talking about Atiku Abubakar, what future lies ahead of him as we await the Supreme Court's uh, judgment in 60 days? Some of your party members are already saying that, look, uh, Atiku, why don't you just allow the young people to just take charge? Can you just please step down? But Atiku is saying that he's still going to court. But irrespective of whatever happens at the Supreme Court, how do you think the PDP can be reorganized as an election winning machine like it used to be in the past? Uh, I, I will leave you with these parting words from uh, former information minister of Nigeria, uh, T.O.S. Benson. In the First Republic. In the First Republic, where he said, and I'm not quoting, I will paraphrase, mm. that man is a political animal and that for people to say that he should retire because he's 83 years is an unjust statement that as a political animal he has the right at any age to continue to aspire to his own aspiration until such a time that the people reject him and so uh, atiku has such right to continue to aspire as so uh, until the people say we don't want to but as so far as we are now the people want him the people who are making those calls are people who believe that he is a stumbling block to their political progress well some of them even accuse him of uh, being the reason why the party didn't win and that i uh, mean he failed to obey the zoning rule and all of that we had also all those sort of debates before but the younger people in pdp who look up to the future how can the pdp reorganize itself we we see there is no uh, fast uh, you know um, uh, straightforward rule as to what to do in a political party the political party works according to its dictates and what is you know affecting it at that particular moment anybody who tells you that atiku uh, was is is the, is the problem is not atiku that is the problem the if for instance including the likes of wiki yes if <laughs> if, if wiki <laughs> they are hitting him back saying that if, look, if wiki because had of had, their own troubles if wiki had if wiki had not formed the g5 the g5 would have worked for atiku so the party had a very strong base but because you know another man's ambition is also trying to overshadow the interest and general interest of the party so i believe that atiku is not a problem because we need a blend of the old breed and the new breed you can the old the young ones cannot just come and take over they need the the wise counsel you know and the tutelage of the old breed so it is a mixture so atiku we, we need him still within the party we need him to provide fatherly advice we need him to how many of them that has the capacity had had the uh, the the spread and has the national acceptance like atiku no all right uh, Umar Sa, 